you should grab your people. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some um, information that I received from God, uh, which I like to call it, uh, you know, directions. So we're going to get right into it. The first thing that I wrote down was don't be too high and don't be too low. Meaning remain humble, stay in the middle, be happy and grateful for where you are in your current moment. And don't be so stressed out that you let it consume you. Be kind and everything you need, you already have. Now, depending on where you are in life, you're equipped with certain things, you know, on your journey. You have certain things in your backpack that you need for the here and the now. And in the future, as you go on, you will see that you will gain more to equip you for those things and circumstances that you're dealing with at that time. So, moving right along. Faith when you don't understand. <clears throat> I know that's kind of easier said than done. Um, you got to get into a place where you are kind of, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. You have to be at a point where you like, you know what? You got to be positive. You could be going through something, but you have to tell yourself, even if you don't believe at the time, at least coach yourself through the situation like, hey, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go to my stress relievers, whatever it is that helps me. I'm going to take my mind off of it. Uh, for instance, when I go through things, I take a nap. <laughs> I talk to God about it. Well, first I, you know, distinguish if it's in my control, out of my control. Is it anything that I could do? And have I done all the things that I was supposed to do? When I put that together, then I say, okay, this is something that I can't control. I did A, B, C, D, and it's not working out. So, God, I give it to you now. I don't know what else to do. I didn't play it in my head so many different ways. And it's not moving how I want it to move or how um, something that I can imagine me getting over. So, I give it to God. And then he makes a way. After I take my nap, <laughs> I wake up and the problem is either resolved. It depends on what the situation is. With certain people, some things happen immediately. Some things happen slower. Some things are, you know, it's a process. Adapt to change. <clears throat> okay, you have to be able to um, adapt to your changes. Um, I was once told that, um, um, that I don't cope well with change. Um, and when I realized that I'm like, wow, every time I move or I do something new, I'm uncomfortable with it. So I had to get in the place where I'm like, you know what, when something shifts or something is different, I need to try to be open enough to, um, even if I don't understand, at least be open enough to go with the flow and just see how things turn out for me. You know, instead of me getting upset and being in my feelings and wondering why it's happening, I just find a way to cope with the new change how to be happy you can find it that's basically what i was just talking about adapting to change um when you're confined or when you in a situation where you feel stuck or things are not moving in your favor that's when you have to tap into that faith that prayer that discernment and that time and place where you're like hey you know, did I complete A, B, C, D? Or, you know, if it's out of your hands, how to let it go. You know, sometimes you're going to have to be in a sitting process. Sometimes you have to just be still. Sometimes even though when you don't get it, the route that you're going might not be the route you need to take. So you might need to take a step back and go about it another way. I've been through that before where I thought that if I had this, this, and that, then I can have what I was aiming for. But in all reality, I had to do it another way, which I thought was backwards. But I had to equip myself, even though I was in a situation that I thought I was going to be stuck, I still needed to do the things that I was trying to get to. Like, for instance, my car was down. So I'm thinking, like, I need my car to get to work. How am I going to get to work if I don't have a car? So what is the point of putting in the application right now if my car not working? But the whole time when I put in the application, 
and did the working process. I had got a ride to my interview, did everything that I was supposed to do. And then when I got the job, guess what? My car was working the same day that I needed to start my first full day at work. So sometimes, you know, when you're in confinement or you're in a place, um, of course, everything we're going through is a test. But don't let one thing stop you from reaching what it is that you're trying to get, even though you feel stuck. Continue to, you know, be productive. Continue to make moves in your confinement. But if you had simple instructions, which was to be still and rest and let God, like if you feel like you just completely don't know what to do, you need to rest. You need to be still. You need to say, hey, let me, let me breathe. And maybe a solution will come about. Sometimes it comes through friends. Sometimes it'll come through a movie. Um, you know, it's all type of different signs for everybody is different. I just gave you an example of what I went through. I thought it was backwards, but the whole time, I guess I was being tested to see would I still be productive even though I was in confinement. Situations can make you wiser or weaker. Like the information I just gave you, you know, um, you can be in confinement or feeling stuck and literally do nothing with yourself and waste a whole bunch of time. Or you can be wise and be productive, you know, in the time frame that you're dealing with your situation. Don't make decisions when you're angry. Okay. So um, your emotions is everything. And it's very important because later on in the notes, I'm going to repeat it. Um, if you respond due to your emotions, you can make some very bad decisions. You can move too fast or you can move too slow, which is procrastination because you're mad. When you're, when you're not feeling good, what you want to do? You want to lay in bed all day. You want to sleep. You're not trying to do nothing and you're actually hindering yourself because in all reality, what you're feeling is not real. It's just the emotional attachment. And sometimes when we don't know no better, our feelings be more hurt than what they really should be. So pay attention to your emotions. Slow to speak, quick to listen. Coming in 2021, if you're, um, you know, having new relationships with friendships, um, <clears throat> with relationships with the partner or whatever the case might be the person gonna tell you exactly how they are who they are you just got to be slow to speak <laughs> and quick to listen people telling themselves all the time what's in them must come out it, it comes out like it or not remain calm it goes back to your emotions when you're out of whack or you're not feeling good and things are not adding up and you're just not, you know, seeing things clearly, remain calm in all situations. Whatever it is that you're going through, I, I don't care what nobody saying. I don't care how you, you know, perceive this. I'm just telling you exactly what it is. Remaining calm in every situation is what's going to get you through the situation. Panicking is not going to do nothing for you. Running around with a chicken, like a chicken with your neck cut off, is not going to help you. It's not going to solve the problem. Remaining calm in every situation helps you to get through the situation, helps you to move forward. If you just stay calm, don't indulge in your emotions, don't respond too quickly, just slow to speak and quick to listen, just go with the flow. <clears throat> keep faith no matter what is going on you can't see what's going on behind you in the, in the in the background in the back scene we know that um even though sometimes you think the world is against you or you think god is against you or you think the forces is against you or you think the person down below is against you it just it's not that deep it's all a test just this whole point of living is to see how you adapt to life to if i was um, God or head over the heavens, just like in my house. You think I'm gonna let anybody in my house? Like, you don't just let people in your house because you're worried about the type of energy that they bring. You're worried about how they respond to things. You're worried about how they make you feel. You're not gonna just um let somebody into your space and they're messing up everything around you. So it makes sense that we're being tested to see how we adapt here on earth and learn the core values on why you're supposed to be. Not saying the heaven is reckless. I don't know what it's like, 
But what I'm saying is, once you become a calm being, a positive being, once you then, it, I, I'm gonna say once you've been through the storm, whatever it is, being able to float, being able to go with the flow and, and, and run like the river, just, you know, being able to be on that cloud is what gets you through any and everything. Um, having insight in a time of trouble, these type of things um, is insight, these notes, like the direction, the um, any advice that you can get, having insight is, is knowing how to react and how to respond to the situation. Everything is a process. Repeating thoughts <clears throat> is your worry. Um, let me see. Repeated thoughts is worry and not thinking. When you're overthinking, you're thinking that you're overthinking, but no, you're really worrying. Um, building an intimate relationship with God is very important to uh, people. You know, you hear some people say be intimate with God. And if you be like, well, what do you mean intimate? Like we think intimate as like sensual, but that's kind of what it is, but not like you can't even physically touch God. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying be so in tune and so in love with God that nothing can be come between you two. You have to get into a place where you trust him. You communicate with him about everything that you want to do, the things that you want, the things that you need. But once you get to a, a certain level with God, you really stop asking for stuff because things are provided on to you without you even having to ask. Everything is a process. Love, grace, and gratitude. That is number one, being thankful for everything. If you, I said this before, if you're not thankful for the little things that you have, it's hard for you to gain. You don't know until you experience it. You don't know what you're thankful for until you lose it. You know, so um, definitely express as many times as possible you know, thank you for whatever it is that you're thankful for. And then you will start to realize things that you haven't even realized that you were thankful for. Um, and you'll be very apologetic, you know, to God once you realize like, dang, this is something that I didn't thank you for. These were things that I didn't acknowledge in the past. Um, you know, God, forgive me. I love you. Thank you for, for everything, um, whatever you're thankful for in your life. Confidence is major key in keeping hope. Keep hope alive. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to lose faith. This is not the time to fight yourself. This is not the time to fight others. This is not, this is not none of that. You have to keep faith and be confident in who you are and what you believe. Like, stand firm with what you've learned. Some people might even question what you're talking about. Like, what? Be confident in what God has shown you. Others go through different things, so they might not understand at the level you understand at the time you're there. So you have to believe in you all day long. God is everything and he is everywhere. Um, clothes, shoes, furniture, whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you do, it's all God. Just period. Another thing that's very, 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 very important. Um, aging is not failure. A lot of times we're running around and we're thinking like, oh my God, um, I'm running out of time. Or you feel like you're in a rush. You feel like you're, you're uh, meeting a deadline or you're going to miss the deadline. Um, you don't, you know, get to your purpose or learn your purpose until you learn yourself and until you learn God. And then he gives that to you. He reveals it to you. Um, but again, aging is not failure. It takes time. It is all a process. So just continue to go with the flow. Continue to keep faith. Continue to keep hope alive. Continue to apply the rest of these rules. Uh, remain humble. Uh, be thankful for the moment and the, the time and era that you're in right now. By the way, um, just to let you know, this is not um, THC or CBD, none of that stuff. This is just regular hookah. But yeah, y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Y'all have a great year. 
Um, stop being so wishful and just, you know, take it one day at a time, one step at a time.